my lovelies, as you can see I am in a new setup, that's because I have moved back to uni and I'm in my third year house right now. So I don't know exactly how the YouTube setup is going to work, but this is the best I've got at the moment. And I'm also so late to filming this August Reads video, which means I don't have two of the three books I read in August with me because two of them have been left at home because they're not relevant to what I need to bring to university. So I'm just going to have to put pictures here of the covers that I'm talking about. I am so late to reading this. I didn't get that much reading done in August. I had a lot of shifts at work. I think I worked 90 hours over the course of August. So I didn't have that much time for reading, so I was just like chipping at things as I went along instead of actually sitting down and having some good reading sessions, like I am now. Now that I've moved back in and I'm settling into a routine, I'm getting a lot more reading done. But two of these books are both books that I finished on the evening of the last day in August, so only two of them are only just August reads as well. So there's only three of them and I'm going to go through them today. The first book I finished in August was An Artist of the Virgin World by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is a book set in 1948 Japan and it's about a painter who is reflecting on Japanese militarism during the war and how things have changed after the war. I picked up this book because 1948 Japan seemed like it might be relevant to my dissertation which I'm doing on the atomic bombs and I thought looking back over Japanese history and Japanese militarism that might come into it and it didn't but I'm also not mad at that because I really enjoyed this book it's one of those books that is style over substance so it's quite a shortish read but it works well being a short read because it's not as much of a plot it moves between starting in 1948 Japan and it moves through different time periods and different reflections that this artist is going through. I just really like that this writing style created a nice feel to the book as I was reading it. I liked the vibe that it was giving off rather than like the plot or the characters to it. In that sense you do have to do a bit of work for yourself because you have to try and figure out why the narrative is moving from this tangent to another tangent, why this like almost stream of consciousness but not quite is moving from idea to idea what the connection is and you've got to think of it for yourself which I quite enjoyed which is also why it works better as a short book and most of the time I did really like this flow although occasionally it did have an indefinite feel kind of like the ending I'm not sure whether the ending is a conclusion to the plot that we did have or whether it's just so much more open to hope so I've given An Artist of Floating World by Kazuo Ichigo four stars the next book I finished was the book that came in the July Books That Matter box which was themed around ecofeminism and that is The Word for Woman is Wilderness by Abby Andrews. This is a book that follows 19 year old Erin from the UK and she's trying to have a wilderness adventure which she's only ever seen being done by men and it's a great exploration of how we think about feminism and how we think about the wilderness and its connection to masculinity and femininity and just a lot of philosophical thought into it but not in a way that's dense or boring, it was just really captured my attention and it's not just philosophy that it's packed full of it's also packed full of facts and history that are usually left out the normal scientific or historical narrative which I love I especially love its circulation always back to space and continuous facts about space I thought it was just brilliant also in saying that it's a book that doesn't just need your attention it deserves to have your attention all the way through and because I was reading it in scattered um, snippets here and there in between shifts I had to um, drop it half a star because I was losing the flow which is more of my fault than the book's fault because you have to sit down with it and you have to allow yourself to be taken with the thought and actually reflect on it for yourself. The structure and the changing methods that Andrews writes with along in this book is also really engaging and it doesn't disrupt the flow, it just made it really intriguing. I especially love the sections that are written as script because Erin is trying to make a documentary out of what she's exploring so I especially love the parts that are written as a script for the documentary and I like a transcribed version of what she's saying to the camera and I love those sections of the book I also love the more factual sections of things that tell you again facts about space and facts about women in NASA which seem to get left out of history I just found the script bits especially to be really easy to just immerse yourself in the story and made it really easy to imagine what's going on and what's happening that way. Unfortunately I don't have it here to show you but my copy is really battered which shows how much I liked it and it's got highlighting all over it which also shows the things that I found so interesting about it so but unfortunately I can't disconnect like reading this book from that horrible reading slump I was in over summer 
So I dropped it down to 4.5 stars, but I suspect if I'd have read it and dedicated my time to it, or if I reread it, that it'll be a full-on five-star read. And the last book that I finished in August, with about five minutes to spare before it was no longer August, is William Morris's News from Noah, which is one of my module books for the term. It's my Tennyson to Tolkien module, which explores medievalism in Victorian to modern writing, so I have got this one with me. It is written in 1819, follows the character William Guest, who falls asleep and then wakes up around the time of, I think it's 2003, I think it's just after, it's early 2000s, I don't think it ever said properly exactly what date it is, but there were allusions to things being built in 2003, so it's a century, over a century later from what he's been set in, and it is this utopian future after a revolutionary upheaval in 1952, and I was a bit confused why this was in our module for medievalism about so about writers um, returning to medieval themes and medieval styles styles and the um, the origins of fantasy novels. Hence why the Hobbit is going to be on the reading list for this, which is great. And when I actually read it, I could see why because this new future is a future that goes back to more medieval values and traditions. There is no currency, for example, everybody works because they enjoy it and they find purpose in working and there are clothes that I think were described as like 14th century clothes, so I can get why now this is in the module. I really enjoyed the beginning of it because I found that it had a great flow to it and I love the parts where he um, woke up and he had to explore um, this new London and learn things about it. I like the learning about the new London as he was travelling through it, as there's a bit of a plot going on. In the middle, however, he sits down with this older gentleman and finds out how this has all come about and there's a massive section of chapters where it's just exposition dump. I would have preferred that to have been as he was going along doing something else because I found that really interesting in the beginning but it was very much like I was being lectured at and it makes you think whether like this political vision could have been written in a different way maybe. And then the later chapters just turned into lots of descriptions of rivers and trees and it was it started out really strong for me and it just sort of fizzled out and the way that chapter one starts you know that it's going to happen from right from the start that this is going to be it and he woke up and it was all a dream ending but i was still really pissed off i was still really angry i shouldn't have said that word that um, it ended like, and he woke up and it was all a dream. I think the actual, this is a bit of a spoiler if you don't want to actually know what it said, but the very last line is, then it may be called a vision rather than a dream. So it's a political vision <laughs> told in a narrative and he woke up and it was all a dream, which is, yeah, I can't help but think a different form might have been better for this or if he's going to stick to the novel form to have more plot like he did at the beginning to it. So I've given this book a solid three stars because I was enjoying it at the start, it's just the ending just became too much of a like political dump. So those are the three books I read in August. September um, made it off to a great start because the pool was actually closed for the first week in September which meant I got a week to get on with doing some work and then I did another 30 hours and now I'm back at uni so it's the last end days of September and I'm really enjoying just being able to read for hours again and I'm loving it and there should be a few more books than this in September reads video. Thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.